Why such ardent intellectual struggles at the beginning of the Christian Roman Empire, therefore from the 4th century, councils like the Council of Nicaea, Ephesus, and Constantinople? I have to outline the context. After the end of the persecutions, Christian theologians appear who have reflected upon scripture and who attempted to confront this serious problem of scripture. Namely, there is one God and Jesus is God. He speaks of his Father as God and the Holy Spirit is God. How many one attempt to explain that only one God can exist when there are three persons and an evaluatively all the theories will appear by saying Jesus is not really God, he is an adoptive God, and there are three gods. In short, everything will be out, and among the thousands of theories which could have broken down the Catholic faith, there is one which is essential as given by the Holy Spirit as believed Catholics with reason. Jesus did promise Peter that his faith will not fail, so that there would be a grace so that the faith of the church will remain solid no matter what occurs beyond these hazards. What on the other hand surprised it is the hardness of these theological debates. That means that we could debate intelligently by saying your hypothesis is interesting but it does not account for this, not that in scripture, far from that, we excommunicate, we insult each other and even saints of the time sometimes practice insult. I'm thinking about Saint Jerome, the translator of the Bible in Latin. He practiced hardness too, but there were bishops also who had got a bad opinion and who are driven out, excommunicated, deprived of all their goods. Why did saints of the time invest on such aggressiveness in seeking truth? For a simple reason, they were men and therefore they invested their zeal for God through what pleased man, intellectual debate, being right, being smarter than his master. However, many of them had been canonized for such works, at least those who had the true faith, the orthodox faith. Why? Because it was still out of love that they researched all this. Only when we look at things well, we must not be under any illusion about these first holy theologians. Saint Louis Marie Grignon de Montfort, much later in the 17th century, would say that the saints of the end of the world will be like sons in comparison with the saints of the beginning of the church, and it may well be true because there are many things to purify. We could represent the way that God makes his church run a bit like this. In the beginning, it was not Adam and Eve, it is Christ who is present, the new Adam, the new Eve, and then they leave in charge the apostles there is in the era of martyrs and in the era of martyrs holiness is bound to be kept in humility and love because one can die the next day but pride is necessarily but even in the martyrs one is a good martyr because he has been faithful and the others who have denied are bad martyrs and it is from there that little by little the church leaves with the theologians canonized at the beginning who are very hard because we are in a church where pride has a lot of room we want to be right it will therefore be necessary during the history of the church many trials to gradually bring it up in humility and love and we know these are our prophecies. At the end of the world, the church would undergo a last persecution, that of the last Antichrist, which will make that small persecuted. It will find the quality of the beginning when it was identical to cross in the art of the Virgin Mary. These are prophecies that the church reports in the Catechism of the Catholic Church at number 675, 676 and 677 they are important to understand this means that the church itself is led by the holy spirit to the world truth and to humility to all love 